American politics is a farce. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all well. So the more I look at American politics and the way they're campaigning for the US presidential election, the more I think it's a complete farce. And last week they had the the first uh, debate with Trump against uh, Kamala Harris. And it, it was like two children up there just bickering and just the way they, they act and the, the language which they use. And not only just in that debate, but also the run up to it. They're doing it with Trump against Biden. And it's become a very polarized voting system in the United States. But I think it's not just the United States, it's everywhere. You know, you're either that side or you're that side. And nobody could ever see across the uh, the divide a little bit. There's no cross-meshing sometimes. Or certainly that's the way the media and the way the online world would have you, would have you think. And certainly the way the politicians talk, you think, well, you know, what's going on? This is just craziness. You know, you, you, would, you would hope that most people, most people in the world, let's just say the United States right now, because this is what we're talking about, American politics is a farce. Most people, wherever they are in the United States, would kind of be in the middle, right? They'd have right side leanings on certain issues. They'd have left side leanings on some issues. But at the end of the day, just like everybody else in the world, you want to be able to you know, provide for your family, have some kind of employment, provide for your plan, family, you know, live in peace, you know, meet a girl, you know, get married if you like, you know, have a family, have some fun with your friends, that kind of thing, and have a safe community. That's essentially what you want, right? That's what people want. They want to live in harmony with whomever they're, they're living with. You don't want to live in fear. You don't want to live with gun violence. You don't want to live with, you know, poverty and all these kinds of things. So whatever's happening in the recent years, most people would want that in the middle. And most people would have a bit of left and a bit of right in them. But all of a sudden you're being, you're being pushed into either going right, totally right, or going left, totally left. I just don't think life is like that. Then you've got politicians, whomever they are, left and right, and you think, what are you doing? You're just, just acting like children. And the, the shots that they're shooting across the bow at each other, it's just like, are you grown-ups here? Then as voters, you're supposed to vote for these clowns? And then you wonder what the hell is going on. So uh, this is an outsider looking in. We've got the same problems here in the UK. In every country, people voting for their leaders that have exactly the same problem. You kind of look at them going, I've got to vote for you. I've got to vote for you, your party, and what you stand for. And I don't believe in everything that you say, but and I certainly don't believe in everything you say, but I probably believe a little bit more of what you're saying. I don't. And it comes to a point where you think, well, it's the lesser of the two evils. It's the lesser of, you know, you probably look at Trump just throwing it all up in the air. And you kind of saw this with Trump against Clinton. You kind of think, well, who, who's the worst of these two? And you kind of think, well, they're both shady in some respects. They're both right in some respects. Then Trump gets in. All the stuff that he was having to deal with, all the stuff that he was doing as well, all the problems that he's created himself, all the shady stuff that they've taken him to court over. And, that you know, you know what, any other person would have gone to jail by now, right? But, oh, no, he's still in, you know, he's still out there. Then you look at the, okay, then Biden gets in and you think, well, what the hell was that all about? You know, probably the worst president the United States have ever seen, you know, in terms of public perception of that person. He, stand, well, he stands down for the next campaign. The vice president comes in that nobody's really voted for to come in. And then all of a sudden you think, well, there's this, there's this polarity between the two candidates, between the two parties that... You probably think, but the the Democratic Party probably wouldn't have had Kamala Harris as their leading campaigner, their leading candidate. The Republican Party wouldn't have had uh, the Trump as as their leader campaigner. And then you think, well, is this these two people, individuals, is it their problem, or is it the parties as a whole that they can't get somebody younger and somebody more more appealing to the masses to vote for them? But the thing is, both both parties have made people go left or right. So that's why in the last presidential election against Biden and Donald Trump, most turnout ever, I believe. I think both sides got millions and millions of voters. I can't remember what it was, 60, 70, 80 million on, on each side, something like that, which is, you know, an, an amazing, it's, it's an amazing turnout. And then you got to talk about, you know, voter fraud and all this kind of stuff.
But it's a farce. When, when the United States, you know, hold up other countries to, you know, for their voting standards and watch and make sure that they're voting correctly, and then you look at their own system, the American system, you think, well, there's so many holes in this. And maybe this is what, you know, Trump was trying to say to people, oh, there's, there's so many holes in this, so many problems in this, there's so many fraud, so much fraud going on here, so many dirty deals. But it doesn't even have to get to as far as the voting booth. It's what's happening before. All the TV stations, news stations, the online stuff, how they're influencing people to go in one way or another. And what's, who is fighting back and who's trying to tell you, you know, that what they're saying is completely wrong or just trying to say, look, this is a farce. And you, before you kind of look at the right side of the aisle, you know, Republican Party, conservatives over here as being, you know, a certain way. But then they've kind of been diluted and changed a little bit. Then you've got the left side of the party, the left side of the aisle, or the Labour Party on this side. You think they were more, let's say, the peace-loving people before, but now they're, they're the big warmongers. And you think, hold on, you know, their roles have changed as well. The people have changed. And they're trying to still get you to vote one way or another. You know, so you get Trump, you get on a presidential debate with Hannes, and he kind of dumps on her, you know, and he's getting a tough ride. She's getting an easy ride. Then you kind of believe, do you believe her? Do you even believe him? Who do you believe in? Who are you going to vote for? Who are you going to believe? So again, you know, the presidential election and Trump and Harris, it's kind of replicated all over the world. But it's a, bit, it's a complete farce, especially when America is supposed to be, oh, you know, something that we hold up to say, well, this is the example. And then they're critical of, you know, other countries why not having proper presidential elections or, you know, local elections or they're fixed. Well, Sort your own house out first. I mean, it's not, it's not a good system. It's not a good system just to have essentially two parties. It's either red or blue, black or white, whatever it is. You need to have more people involved. And this is what people are calling for, more, more parties involved. Not have so much uh, influence by, uh, by lobbyists, not so much by corporate funding as well. Just try and get away from that. Just get it, get it back to the people voting for whomever they want. And if you want something, you know, if you're going to vote for somebody, you, you're going to vote for somebody local, somebody who's local, somebody who's tangible, who's going to be fighting for your local area. Your, your local MP, your local councillor, your local wardsman, your, whatever it is, whoever's local for you, they're the ones who are going to be able to affect more change. That's going to affect your person or your, it's going to affect you personally. It's going to affect your day-to-day -day life. If you're voting for, you know, the prime minister or the president here or whatever, the emperor there, well, they're looking at a national scale. They don't care about you. They don't care about your environment. They don't care about exactly where you live. So what they want you to vote for or as regards them may not even apply to you. Even if, let's say, you're a strong Trump supporter and you vote for Trump or you vote for Harris, whatever it is, you vote for Starmer, you vote for whomever, right? It doesn't make a difference, really, because locally to you, those policies don't really apply. Trump gets into a power and all of a sudden it might be exactly the same for you or it might have improved. You just don't know. The criticism that he was getting, oh, he's going to be all evil, the world is going to end before he gets into power. Well, he didn't, did he? It didn't. It, it just went on okay. He, he, you know, got on with things. Yes, he was criticised for a lot of things, but the world didn't end. There wasn't World War Three. Now we're on the brink of World War Three. In, in some cases, in some people's eyes. Well, who's been under the control of that? Well, guess what? Warmonger Biden. He's been, uh, you know, uh, banging that drum as well, hasn't he? It's not always clear cut. And especially when you have this, this childish behavior, this kind of media frenzy where you're having to push, be pushed left or right, all of a sudden the whole thing becomes a farce. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like what I do here, don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell for future videos, and I will catch you again in another video coming very soon. Bye now.